Once upon a dream, consider the dragon again. For the first time since the battle had begun, there was a hush. The demons were all dead. The pl people in the castle looked around at each other, guardedly hopeful. Aurora Rose let out a deep breath. The excitement of the fight, the adrenaline high of survival, was leaving her. She slumped, feeling exhausted. Her dream world was destroyed. The Thorn Castle was no more, torn down by its very elements in the battle against Maleficent. Distances were messed up. Things that were far away were too clear and large, as if they had been drawn in wrong. Clothes and beds and golden bric-a-brac littered the ground like an oversized dollhouse that had been smashed by a giant child. The remaining dens denizens of the castle looked pitiful and fell now exposed to the mad sky. They pressed against the crumbling remains of the giant thorns that were the only things left to mark the borders of the castle walls. The vines no longer had prevented them from leaving, but neither did they offer any protection. The raven began to caw. It might have sounded piteous to some, but to Aurora Rose it sounded like fingernails on slate, and it took all her willpower not to crush the bird in its woody cage. "'I don't think she's done yet,' Liana said unexpectedly. The evil handmaiden had spoken neither excitedly nor dis disappointingly. She was just making an objective observation. She looked interested at where the body of Maleficent lay buried beneath the giant pile of debris. "'Obviously, Liana. Aurora rose said disgustedly. We're all still here, not awake. She's not dead. Liana looked shocked, maybe even a little hurt by the princess's tone of voice. You're right, of course. I hadn't thought. I thought logic didn't work in dreams, she said a little philosophically. Yes, and you also thought I was a lot dumber than I really am, and then across the silence of the strange world was the teeniest noise of pebbles shifting, of dust sifting down through an unseen blackness a clink of rocks small rocks being shoved aside one at a time a laborious shifting of weight one rock grinding painfully against another a single piece of rubble fell rubble fell off the top of the pile ominously bouncing and sliding away down the ruined and uneven castle floor then everyone was silent aurora rose turned to say something to philip and a hand shot up out of the pile, stabbing its way to the light. A big, a big, clawed, black hand. No, Philip whispered. As if it was gaining strength from the sheer possibility of release from its stony prison, the creature underneath the rocks began to shift and move. Waves and waterfalls of boulders and rubble tumbled heavily to the floor. A roar rose quickly used up what was left of the castle, trying to crush the horrific thing that was slowly emerging. Giant beams, bedrock, furniture, statues and walls and windows and turrets and every tower she had jumped from, it all co converged on the spot, forcing itself to impossibly small spaces as she imaged, imagined cr crushing the life out of Maleficent. Stones screamed and exploded. Burning liquid scree filled its gaps in the holes, sealing it. There was nothing left. A hot, dusty breeze scored the desolate plain that had once been a castle. The only thing that remained unbroken and upright were the throne and the strange, hovering oval that showed the real sleeping Aurora. Her face was twisted, contorted, her dreams of battle and violence causing her to react in her sleep. But the dreamy, dreamier made no noise. Everything was silent. And then the dragon burst forth. It rose from its cracks, stony prison, like a lizard from its egg. The thing rose higher and higher to the sky, enormous, nearly as tall as the castle had been, black and purple and yellow, like a proper storybook dragon at all. Too skinny here, too lumpy there, wings that were little more than useless flaps and, uh, on ugly blackened stumps of shoulders, long, narrow, beak-like mouth full of teeth, like those of the demons Maleficent had summoned. It screamed, the terrible noise ripping across the empty land. Horrific, like something from the end of the world. It shrieked and shook rocks off its seemingly endless scaly back and continued to grow into its new skin. Get out, Aurora Rose said to Philip without moving her eyes from the dragon. Get everyone out of here. I'm staying with you. Princess killed dragons. That's what we're all about. You didn't kill her enough last time. Help me after you get everyone away. Philip opened his mouth to argue but was interrupted by a shout from behind. Good subjects of House Stefan. 
King Hubert stood on the path that led the forest, as tall and unmovable as mountain, despite the ragged clothing flapping around its an his ankles. On his legs and arms were flesh fresh wounds, deep, ugly gouges, still weeping blood. But his good eye, clouded before, was clear and icy. He clasped his stone as if it were a royal orb, and his stick a mighty staff. Father, Philip whispered in wonder, you're alive. Come to the shelter of the forest, Hubert ordered. Follow me and await its battle's end out of harm's way, now. As if waiting to be told what to do, the straggling crowd immediately ran to him. He stood aside and gestured from past, then passed with his stick, like a stern shepherd. And so Aurora Rose's subjects fled from what must have looked like a different kind of death to the dreamland sleepers. The forest, they were told, was dangerous and deadly. The princess felt a surge of warmth and gratitude, something she had rarely felt for an adult in, uh, other than her aunts. People could be surprising. Not everyone in the world was untrustworthy and disappointing. Not everyone lied to you or failed you. Quietly pleased, Philip watched his father with a smile. As the last little child ran past him, the king turned and gave a big old Hubert-style wink. He shook a stone and stick and whispered, I'll defend them with my very blood. And then he was off behind them, shouting extortions and marching very precisely. Aurora Rose put a hand on her head. Maleficent's transformation had taken an absurd amount of power, and the blood magic resonated soundly in the princess's body. It was her power the evil fairy stole. She was weak and not ready for what could come next. The dragon reared up. It belched a wide stream of ugly green fire from its beak. Philip grabbed Aurora Rose and swung her on the other side of him, then stood in front of her. Liana stood still, strangely uncowed by the fire that seemed like it could have just as easily consumed her. As the flames neared, the Aurora Rose whipped up a wind that swept the fire aside and into the sky in a vortex of smoke and ash. The dragon shrieked in frustration. But how could she defeat it? What would disable it? What would, at the very least, trip it up? Gorges. She remembered them from her first time in the woods, steep and narrow. At the bottom were shallow, pebbly streams. The world fell out from below the dragon. The ground craved into itself and tumbled into the bottomless pit that opened up. The giant lizard shrieked and fell backward, clawing desperately to try to stay upright. Aurora Rose felt a tugging inside her head. Give up. You cannot defeat me so easily. The dragon was slithering its way out of the pit, tail and legs moving so quickly and strangely it was like it was climbing the air itself to get out. Prince Philip ran toward it, sword out. Just at the edge of the pit, he stopped and sliced at the thing's neck, which was now level with the ground. It didn't even scratch a scale. Maleficent threw her head back and laughed, yellow eyes narrowing. Right. I don't know that, that was the only thing, perhaps, that saved Philip from the eye-level blast of hellfire. He ran away, past the dragon, zigzagging over the ruined castle floors, through what had once been the kitchens, the chapel, the treasury. He stopped on the other side of the pit and taunted Maleficent, trying to draw her attention away from Aurora Rose. He clanged his sword against his cuirass and hooted. Too slow, Maleficent. The dragon was now entirely out of the pit. It snaked after him, moving and twitching and shuddering like it hurt to stay still. Aurora Rose pushed her hands apart. She imagined opening up the earth like a giant book. The dragon ran headfast straight on into a hill that suddenly rose before it. It staggered, stunned for a moment, and then it rose, shaking its neck and head and wobbling a bit, and immediately sca scrabbled over the ground after it fell up Philip again. Aurora Rose looked around in desperation. What else could she do? The trees. With a sad twinge, Aurora Rose remembered seeing them for the first time when she escaped the Thorn Castle. How amazed she had been when they still existed. Now they pulled themselves out of the ground with creaking, groaning screams. Branches fell off as an invisible hand stripped their trunks to deadly points. She sent them after Maleficent. The first one slammed the dragon squarely in the back. It swung his head around in annoyance, brushing it off like a twig and fluttering its useless thing wings angrily. Aurora rose through a dozen more after that, one after another, screaming like the through the air like a large, deadly arrows. Maleficent roared, then scampered toward her on ugly, failing legs, doing little to avoid the trees. The wooden tips blunted. The tr trunks cracked in half. The missiles bounced off the armor of her skin. When they hit, she merely flinched. Twigs and leaves cannot hurt me, you silly girl. Philip was chasing after the dragon again, sl 
sloshing it at its tail to get its attention. Maleficent's head whipped around faster than seemed possible, and she belched a river of green fire at him. Aurora Rose screamed. Ugly, hissing black smoke rose where Philip had been. It drifted, ghost-like, over the piles of rocks and boulders. The dragon threw back its head and roared out laughter like bile. Then it turned with a certain regal slowness, as if savoring the next bit. Aurora Rose swallowed a, a sob. She had to not think about Philip. She had to think about the hundreds of people who depended on her, everyone who needed her to live and win and wake up so they could live. What kills dragons? Think Aurora, she said out loud, panicking. What kills dragons? Philip! Philip had his magic sword. Aurora Rose imagined a dozen of them. They rained on Maleficent like the crazy sky, the, from the crazy sky like metal drops, plinking against her skin. The dragon's flesh shuddered, clawing crawling and puckering where each one hit. A few scales, the sides of war shields fell, but no blood was drawn. No weapons of man can destroy me. I am a mere fairy no more. I am the greatest thing in this world. The dragon's tongue forked and giant came out and raked over its lips in expectation. The beast slithered slowly up on Aurora Rose and raised its deadly claw, each nail twice as long as the sword she had summoned and as black as death. And then suddenly... Maleficent's neck snapped back. She screeched in pain, a horrible sound that carried across the world. Standing under her, looking grim, was Liana. She had her little bodice knife sunk deep in the flesh of Maleficent's ankle and was twisting it. But weapons from hell can take back what they are owed. There was a very faint but definite smile on her lips. She pulled her dagger out and sank it again, this time in the flat of the dragon's foot. Maleficent roared with rage and spasmed, shaking her leg to free herself, but the dagger stayed back. She tur turned to bite Liana in half. Suddenly, Philip was there, plopping up from behind a boulder. His hair and clothes were singed, and there were burns across his face, but otherwise he seemed unharmed. He cleared the distance between him and Liana in seconds. He grabbed her around the waist like she was no more than a ball in a game and kept running. Maleficent whipped her tail like a club. The tail, the tip just touched his side, and it was enough to, but it was enough to knock him down. He landed with a sickeningly heavy thud, and Liana fell out of his grasp. As fast as a cat with a mouse desperate to escape, the dragon leapt over Philip to pounce on the handmaiden. No! Aurora Rose cried, trying to summon the earth to move, to make a canyon between the two. It was too late. With a look of pure hatred, the dragon ripped its front claws over Liana's face and body. Their needle-sharp tips shredded her flesh and opened her innards to the light of day. And then, as if it had merely been an annoying task to be dealt with, the dragon was done. Maleficent spun around and faced Philip and Aurora Rose, not even bothering to gloat over her kill. Liana! Aurora Rose cried. Sorry, her old handmaiden wheezed. Then her black eyes froze in, spa in place. It was too much. From friend to betrayer, to friend and savior, to gone. Aurora Rose couldn't process it, it, all of it. Stop, she told herself. Mourn her later. Think now. From somewhere unseen, a clock began to strike the hour. Philip and Aurora Rose and even Maleficent paused in confusion. There was nothing left to the castle, except for the forest. And the whole world looked destroyed and grim, flat and fe featureless in all directions. Yet the distant bong of a clock could be heard, eerily and perfectly, everywhere at once. Cold dread washed over Aurora Rose. Maleficent reared up on her hind feet and left one splayed from the dagger. She laughed. Midnight, on the day after your sixteenth birthday, Aurora. Now you will die, and I will live again. Aurora Rose thought desperately. What else could she do? All this was because of the curse. All this was because she pricked... Suddenly, she knew. She knew what she had to do. Although she had only ever seen one in real once in the real world, she could bring up a perfect image of her memory. The spinning wheel. Bits and pieces of the ruined castle. Chairs and tables and beams and other chunks of wood, bro broken wood began to fly through the air. They spun and re interconnected and wiggled until each piece fit, sucking together like lodestones. Aurora Rose frowned, concentrating hard to get the trickier bits in place. They made an ugly and enormous spinning wheel. Maleficent laughed and belched green fire. The spinning wheel caught flame immediately and started to burn away. 
all but the spindle, the bright black nail with the sharp tip. The dragon looked confused for a moment. Aurora Rose drove the spindle into its heart. The dragon screamed. It spewed fire and changed different hideous colors. Bloody red, sickly black, hellfire yellow. Purple and scarlet and black ichor throbbed from the wound in a giant-sized echo of what happened to Lady Astrid. Aurora Rose watched with a grim, horrible satisfaction. The dragon clawed at its wound, trying to pull the spindle out, perhaps. But all it succeeded on doing was ripping out patches of scales and flesh. It toppled, falling so hard on the that the ground shook. The princess was almost thrown off her feet. The dragon writhed and scrambled on the ground as if trying to claw its way back to life. It shuddered and hissed and convulsed. Its wings and legs and scales and tail billowed and fluttered and seemed to shriek to become raggedy flaps of cloth. These finally shredded and collapsed around what could have been its giant body, except there was no body anymore either. Just a black and purple and yellow stain on the ground, with little pieces of silk flapping in it like a dying butterfly.